Alright, Mr. Myers is here and I'm going to go over function translations with you today. So we're looking at taking a function and then moving it, shifting it up or down, or stretching it or shrinking it. So let's take a look at the function translations and what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a general function. Um, what I mean by a general function, I mean like general function. I mean, uh, <laughs> I mean a function that's just a picture and we're not really dealing with like um, f of x equals x squared or or something like that where we know what the, the, the equation is. It's just a, a graph, okay? So we're going to look at how these things change graphs and we have, um, we have the translations here so I'll let you take a second and copy these down. Um, when we add a number outside the parentheses, we're going to shift it up or down, A units. If we add it inside or subtract, we're going to shift it left or right, A units. If we're multiplying outside, that stretches or shrinks it vertically by a multiple of A. So what we're going to do is we're going to multiply our Y values by A. If we multiply inside by A, then by a number, we're going to stretch or shrink it horizontally, so this way, and that's going to be by a multiple of 1 over A. So we're going to multiply X values by 1 over A. We're going to, if we have a negative outside our F of X, we're going to reflect it about our X axis. If we have a negative inside our parentheses, we're going to reflect it about the Y axis. Now, I don't know if you can hear this, and I'm stepping out for a second, drink a little bit of water, but you could probably hear, you might be able to hear the band. Um, they're practicing today, so hopefully I can talk over that, and uh, we have a little background music to go with that. If you're in the band, ooh, sound pretty good today. So uh, let's take a look at some examples here. The first one I'm going to do is we're going to use this as my function for all the ones that I'm doing. Uh, for the first one, I'm going to do y equals f of x minus 2 plus 3. So I'm going to take a step-by-step -step approach here, and I'm going to <clears throat> I'm going to just do a you know one step at a time. But I'm going to use the same graph here, so I'm not going to put them on separate graphs like we did for the other ones. So I'm going to start first by graphing f of x minus two. Now x minus two is going to be inside the parentheses. If this is going to shift it left or right, since it's negative, we're going to actually go the other way. So if it's um, minus 2, that shifts it over to the right 2 units. If it was plus 2, I would shift it over to the left 2 units. It's kind of like opposite of what you would normally think. The other thing I want to mention is when you do these, you always go inside out. So you're always going to do this addition that's outside. You're going to do that last, and we'll see an example where we, we're going to definitely have to do that last. So we're going to move everything over 2 units to the right. Okay, one, two, <clears throat> we're going to move this one over, one, two, and I know my scale looks kind of odd here. Um, and then this one over, one, two, this one over, one, two. Okay, so I've got something that looks like this. Okay. So I've just shifted the whole thing over two units. Now I'm going to shift the whole thing over up three units, okay, because this is adding. This goes directly up or down. So if it's plus three, we're going to go up. If it was minus three, we'd go down. So we're going to shift this one up three. So you're going to take all the y values and shift it up three. So notice that when I shifted it over, I didn't change the y values at all. Now I'm not changing the x values, but I'm going to change this up three. So one, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, oops, one, two, three, and <clears throat> one, two, three. This is a two here. So one, two, three. Okay, and that right there is my graph shifted over to the right, two, and up three. Okay, so we'll take a look, a look at another one. We'll do about three examples today, okay? So we'll come back with another one. Oh, okay, number two. Y equals two times F of negative X plus one. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna start with F of negative X. F of negative X reflects about the Y axis. So we're gonna take all of this and we're gonna, we're gonna kind of spin it spin it around the y-axis, okay? So over here, this was at negative 2, now it's going to be at positive 2. 
Okay, so I'm going to be here. Now, this is a pretty crazy distance. <laughs> distance of one here, right? All right, <clears throat> this is going to spin around the y-axis, but it stays the same, so it stays there. <clears throat> this one here is at x equals 2, and now it's going to be at x equals negative 2. This is at negative positive 3, so now at negative 3. This was at negative uh, positive 4, so now it's going to be at negative 4. And now that's, that, that's what that looks like. So this is, this is the graph of f of negative x. So I've just kind of spun it around the y-axis. Now I'm going to do the 2 next. Remember the, the previous problem I said we're going to do the adding one at the end. So we're going to do 2 next. So let's, let's do this in green here. Okay, so we're doing y equals 2 f of negative x now. So the 2, what the 2 is going to do over here is it's going to stretch or shrink, shrink vertically by a multiple of a. So what we're going to do is we're going to multiply the y values here by a. Okay, so the y value here is negative 2, so I'm going to multiply that by 2, which is going to be negative 4. So instead of being at negative 2, it's going to be at negative 4. That's right. Right in the middle of this guy here. Four. Okay. Let me rewrite what we're trying to do. Two times f at negative x plus one. Okay. All right. So uh, now we're gonna. This is zero because zero times two is just zero. Now this is a two, so we're gonna bring it up to four. Two, three, four because we're going to multiply it by 2. We're multiplying the y values by 2. Multiply this y value by 2. It's up here. We're going to keep the x the same, though. Multiply this y value by 2. We get 0. So we've got this, this, and that. It's not really curved. It's supposed to be straight, but it's curved. There. I'm not very great, great at drawing. OK, so uh, red. Let me get a new red marker here. That one's kind of going out. So. Now we've got the green part, we're going to add one. <laughs> I just can't get lucky with these red markers. All right, so we're going to add one. So we're going to bring this up one, up one, up one, up one, up one, and there we go. Okay, so that's the graph of y equals 2 f and negative x plus 1. All right, let's do one more. Let's throw in uh, one of these negatives inside, and, or I'm sorry, an A inside, and then a negative outside, so we're reflective about the x-axis next. And then um, oh, we'll, do, uh, we'll do some more, maybe another adding, okay? Okay, one more, here we go. Okay, last one here. Y equals negative 3 f of x over 2 minus 1. So hopefully, I know this, um, I don't know I didn't put a lot of practice problems on this video, um, but hopefully you've taken and you've tried a few of these before I've gone over all of them. So let's take a look at what this one does. And guys, I finally got a red marker that works here. So I'm going to start with f of x over 2. Okay. So let's take a look at what f of x over 2 looks like. Now, when you multiply the inside, by a number. You're going to take and you're going to multiply all the x values by 1 over that number. So what we're doing is we're, we're stretching this this way, or shrinking it this way, but kind of by the reciprocal of whatever, whatever we have in there. So um, if we had multiplied by 2, we would take all our x values and divide them by 2. Since we're dividing by 2, we're going to multi or since we're really we're really multiplying by a half we're going to divide by a half which really multiplies by 2. So in this case we're dividing by 2 which means we're going to multiply our x values by 2. So our x value here is 0 so that's going to stay the same. Our x value here is negative 2 so we're going to multiply that by negative 2 and get negative 4 and the y value stays the same. Here we have positive 2, so we're going to multiply that by, <clears throat> by positive 2, and we're going to get 4. So again, the y value stays the same. I'm looking at this point, and I'm multiplying it by 4, or by 2 to get 4. I'm multiplying this one by 2 to get 6. 6. 
and I'm multiplying this one by 2 to get 8. About right there. Okay? So then I'm going to connect these. And so hopefully you can see here how we took this graph and we stretched it out this way by a multiple of 2. All right, and it's done. It's done this way. It's done the, like kind of like I don't say I'm, I don't want to say the inverse, but it's the, the reciprocal of the inside. Okay, so now we're going to apply. Let's go ahead and apply the um, negative three to that. All right, so let's do negative three and negative three. Remember, the three outside stretches it vertically, and the negative flips it around the x-axis. So what you could do is you could do both of them in one shot. You could just take the y value and multiply it by negative 3. So I'm going to take the y value here as 0. I'm going to multiply that by negative 3 and then just get 0. So that's going to stay there. Here I'm going to take the, the y value, which is 2, and I'm multiply, multiply it by negative 3. So 2 times negative 3 is negative 6. So this point now goes down here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Negative 6. <clears throat> This one is the same y value, so I'm going to go down here and put it down here too. Down here. This stays at 0. This was at negative 2. Negative 2 times negative 3 is positive 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 is up here. About right there. So now. Okay. So now I've taken and I've stretched it this way and stretched it this way, all right, with these two moves. And now the last move here is to subtract 1. So I'm going to go ahead and subtract 1. And subtracting 1 is easy. We just go down 1. Down 1. Down 1. Down 1. Down 1. Okay, so the, the outside is always shifting up and down. Um, you always do the last step is always the outside addition or subtraction. Always move up and down in these types of problems last. Okay. In the next video, I'm going to apply this idea to parent functions and shifting parent functions, um, just using these shifts and transformations. Okay. And we put it all together. And we have translations and transformations and graphing composite functions. And we can pretty much graph all kinds of different functions using all these tools. All right. So here we go, guys. That is using function translations. Catch you next time.